Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rod Scribner from RV Talk Radio. It's a beautiful day down in Arizona. Thank you very much for uh, listening. And today we're going to talk about should you keep your home if you're going to become an RVer or should you sell it? There's a lot of opinions about this, so let's get going. So, once again, I've been watching Facebook and watching uh, conversations going on. And there's still a pretty good conversation going on in um, the group uh, called 50 and Over about whether you should sell your home or not when you retire or go full-time RVing or not. And uh, some interesting comments. And so, I'm not... um, I'm not one way or the other. It's really going to be different. For example, if you were somebody in California, uh, you would probably sell your house for $400,000, $500,000, let's say. They tend to be higher than some areas. Then you move to a place like Bend, Oregon, or some uh, outer area. Uh, the housing is uh, uh, different prices. And you could actually come in and, and and nail a house, real nice house, maybe even with some property and stuff in a different region uh, that's less, um, you know, not by the big cities, and find yourself a cute little place to retire and have it paid off in full. And then there's other cases where you might be in a city like uh, Phoenix, well, Phoenix isn't as bad as like California, where... Uh, if you're coming from a place like Oregon or Washington, and uh, unless you're in the city and come down and you decide you want to buy a house down here, you may find the houses to be much more expensive than the one you just sold or that you're living in. Or you can find, or you may find out you're, uh, you can't find something as comfortable or as uh, economical to, you, um, to live in as you did of of the house you sold before. So uh, definitely an issue and a a lot of folks that are young and stuff is like, well, that's not a problem for me, but uh, the majority of the folks that are still RVing are going to be the ones retiring or getting ready to do like snowbirding and things like that. So that's why I want to bring this subject up. So I I like to talk about it a little more. So it's also, um, uh, I'm not going to forget that in 2008 we had a major recession and a lot of people got beat up pretty bad, including me and Sherry. And uh, some people lost their houses, uh, got foreclosed on, uh, decided to go into uh, an RV and get their costs down and recover and things like that. So those conditions are out there. I'm meeting a lot of folks with uh, that situation. So the the big question that comes to mind is is age, of course. Age is uh, definitely a big factor in this conversation. And then the other factor is um, is health. And uh, of course, you always hear me bellyache about health care and the Obama stuff, um, and which is not a bad deal for people of low income, but middle class and above. It's just not um, a feasible thing. I mean, people are doing it, but it's really expensive. It's not It's not that good an insurance when you really look at the deductibles and stuff. And the fact that you get, you know, you, you can't necessarily travel with it and be that, that convenient with it. So, anyhow, you ever notice every time I get on the radio, every whistle, every beep, every sound that could possibly happen in the RV will happen. So, sorry about that. But it, it's real life, so and it's living in an RV, so that's just how it is, so you know we're real here. So the point of this whole thing is, as you get older, I don't care what you say or what you think, the real thing is your health is going to become a factor. And my best description of anything over 50 is like a car with a check engine light just comes on, and you can't seem to ever get it to stay off. And so, um, 
eventually, somewhere along the line, your health, um, your endurance, you might say, will decrease. Just that's how it is. And there's going to come a time where you're going to ask yourself, do I, and you may have a spouse too. What if you lose one of those spouses? Do you want to be in the middle of a RV adventure and lose a spouse or where a spouse gets really sick, which does happen and it has happened, and find yourself um, uh, living in an RV alone and saying, oh, what did I do? We should have, you know, we could have had a house, so we had a house and we got rid of it. And so that's a big thing. And so I have the same concerns. It's like uh, I'm, we're in our 50s. The real ism uh, is uh, Sherry's working. We got great insurance. We got great dental and vision through that, but we have to stay put. So now the big question to me and Sherry is, well, do we want to live this lifestyle in an RV and still work, but our income's a comfortable income? So why do we have to live in an RV when we could be in a house? When you play with the numbers, we almost it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But you know, here, I mean, for example, here um, we pay over nine hundred dollars a month. And, uh, and then propane, uh, we go through oh probably forty dollars a month. I would say maybe thirty, thirty to forty dollars, and that's the worst scenario. Of course, if you're in the <laughs> winter areas, you're going through a lot more than that. And uh, uh, so, I mean, yeah, we're going to be spending a little more, but you know, we also will have our own washer and dryers and things like that. So. Sherry and I are definitely uh, looking at the fact of maybe we'll buy a house down here and go back to extended RVing and then uh, uh, put the RV in special places that we want and leave it there at monthly places. And yeah, then, or obviously our costs will go up, but it'll be really nice. So when we have a weekend come, we could go over to Lake Havasu and the RV is already there, set up in an RV park and ready to go. And all we have to do is hop in our little car and go over and enjoy it. And, of course, when we get up to the 65 mark, we'll have Medicare. We'll get a supplemental insurance and um, probably start sunbirding, which would be going from Arizona up to the northwest in the, in the spring t uh, summertime. That's just, just thinking out loud. So a lot of folks, you know, they uh, they they ask themselves and look in all this stuff, and you hear these people saying, Oh yeah, sell everything. Less stuff, better. Uh, you know, hundred and one problems, and but a mortgage isn't one of them. I know it's ninety nine, but uh, you know, uh, so people have got their houses. Some people have got their houses paid off. Some people have lived in their houses for a very long period of time, have a lot of equity, or they're paid off. And then you know they got these people saying, "Oh yeah, sell your house, go buy an RV, use the spare money to travel," and and that's great. Until the end of the of the, of the road, and, and then you're going to be asking yourself, well, what what now? I've got this RV and it's you know, I paid two hundred thousand for it, or a hundred thousand depending on what you bought, and you can only get one third. It's only worth about one third of what you paid for it, and uh, you burned up all you know your your spare money there. You may have still have a nice chunk of change and maybe you'll say, well, I'm going to buy a house. You probably have to finance because you don't have that large amount of money to buy a house. Then you find out houses are much more expensive than, you know, uh, than you expected, especially if you decide um, you're going to an area that you like, like uh, Florida or Arizona or some good retirement areas. And you find out that condos and houses and um Places like that are just way <laughs> are expensive, and it really will put a dent into whatever your nest egg was. So, anyway, this is like I said, we're just putting this out for uh, food for thought. And so, uh, the big question is, especially if you're folks like are in your uh, late forties, fifties, and thinking about retiring, do you, and you have a house, do you want to get rid of it? And, you know, of course, there's the responsibility and all that stuff. Maybe you want to rent it. 
well, that's a whole nother <laughs> problem that you might want, may or may not want to put up with. Um, or keep it and become a, well, then you don't have to necessarily be a snowbird, but you can come and go as you please as long as if you have it paid off, heck, that's a pretty good deal. Um, everybody's different. I can't assume that everybody that's becoming 55 or 65 uh, have their houses paid off. There's a lot of stuff that's happened in the economy in the last 30 years between recessions and problems and um uh, housing market was nuts back in the uh, late 2007, uh, six, seven, eight. Uh, and if people bought houses back in then, we paid way too much for houses. Well, you may be underwater. Who knows? It's just, and so there's no a quick fix or a, 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 a path that just everybody should follow. Everybody's path is a little different. Then, of course, you've got the young folks that are out there going, oh, I'm going to hit the road and all that stuff. And, and the question is, is, what are they going to do eventually? And, and the questions they got to ask themselves is, how long do I think I want to do this? And, of course, the young ones will say, well, this is what we're going to do forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, I, I have news for you. Just, you can't help it. Things will change. Economies will change. Opportunities will change. Relationships will come along. Children might come along. It could really change the way you think about life today. And so then you got to ask yourself, well, then if I have to settle down, could I? Could I buy a house or do I have to rent? Or do I want to get a condo? Or don't I want to? Or do we just want to go through life, all of our lives, in an RV? And, uh, it's got pros and cons, and there's nothing wrong with any of it. But if you don't have to be in an RV, wouldn't you rather be in a house or a condo? And uh, if you already have a house and can find a way feasibly to do RVing and keep your house, wouldn't you rather do that? Wouldn't you rather have the comforts that most Americans should be allowed to have? I don't know. I, I'm just bringing this stuff out personally um it would sure be nice not to always be cramped it would be nice if i could leave a few things out for me like all this equipment i use for cameras and podcasts and stuff instead of always having to put things away right after i'm done and then uh you know break it all down put it in its boxes and then the next day go through the procedure again uh, when we're doing filming here, it's like uh, I got to put up green screens and lights and all that stuff. And I try to do all that during the day before Sherry gets home because this RV is a wreck when I'm doing filming. And it should be nice to have my own studio and things like that. So, uh, <laughs> hint, hint, <laughs> there could be a change coming up for me and Sherry. So, we're thinking about this subject too, is um, it would actually be so nice to be able to have a place that I could have my RV at my house or maybe put my RV up in Washington and put it in storage. And so here's what a lot of people do up in the Northwest, or should I say from the South? They're what I call sunbirds. They actually keep their RVs up in, uh, at least I, I know about this in Washington. I know several folks that keep their RV up in Washington State. And they keep it in storage. But they live in Arizona. So what they do is um, when it gets time to, um, when the summer comes, it's getting really hot here. So what they'll do, and they're retired and can leave their home, they have homes down here. They will shoot up in a car instead of towing an RV up to Washington, contact a transport company to pull their RV out of storage, and put it in a location in an RV park that they've set up ahead of time for that whole summer. And uh, what a sweet deal. And when the summer's over, they just kind of prepare and break down the RV, make sure it's all winterized, have the transport company come back in again, transport it back to the storage unit, and back to the south they go in, say, October. What a sweet deal. And uh, that's a great way. And in storage, in some of those places, this is like in Anacortes, Washington, is as low as forty dollars a month to keep your RV up. Uh, some of those places, so it's a really good deal. 
So uh, anyway, uh, that's another way to go. You could keep your house. I know another folks, uh, some other folks that have a park model in Anthem, and then they go up to Washington and pull their RV out of storage and do what I was just telling you about. Uh, it's all over the place, and, but I really, it's really important not to get caught up in the media stuff of what you hear on these uh, social media. I even, you know, and, and that's probably why we constantly get in trouble on this on this uh, station, our broadcast here. It's because we're realists. And so, you know, one day it sounds like Rob's pro RVing and the next day it goes, well, Rob's just a negative, uh, cranky old man. And it's like, no, we're just open-minded here. And... Uh, what works best for me and Sherry may not work for you. Maybe you love to live in a van or maybe a small size uh, Class C and, uh, and and you're perfectly content and you love the minimalist life. And uh, I can you know I can mention what I do and don't like personally, but I am open-minded to it. Just like when it comes to politics, I am open-minded to both parties. I'm partial to one. But I've got to listen to the other because that's how the world works. People have opposing opinions, and that's okay. And uh, that's why I tell people if you have feedback for our show and it's something negative, just be professional. Just like I would be professional to you saying, oh, okay, let me hear your point. Uh, well, I'm still not sold, but thank you for your point and feedback. That's how we want you to act on this show. If you can, if we say something that gets you Twitter pated, <laughs> sorry, we don't mean to, but we want you to think about this RVing adventure that you're thinking about, and talk about the real issues. Like you know, uh, do you want to sell a house? Do you want to give up all that? Have you thought about the future? And have you even talked to people? that are maybe 10, 15, 20 years older than you and ask them what their issues are now? Have you done that? Really, have you done that? Because if you listen to some of these shows, they'll just tell you it's peaches and cream. And it's not necessarily that way. And what might be okay for them may not be comfortable for you. And so, ideally, I'd love to see you sell your house by the dream RV, travel to the, the, the region, maybe go up to Alaska, visit Canada, maybe get brave and go down to the uh, some of these uh, caravans down in Mexico and have yourself a blast. And I hope you have the finances and uh, uh, structure for your medical and health to support all that. <laughs> and that would be the dream situation. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, it'd be even better to do all that and still have a home to go to when you need a break from the RV because it would be nice. I can tell you, I, we've been in an RV for 18 months now. I could use a break from the from this RV. Uh, it'd be nice to just kick back to have you know a full-size bathroom to have a yard for Cinder to run around in. It would be nice, and it'd be great to have a, some a room or a couple rooms I could use for studio stuff, along with some other projects that we do. So yeah, um, what are you gonna do? And I, I really, I almost have to put a gun to your head and say, have you done the research? Have you actually talked? To, and more than one, you want to talk to people. If you're 45, talk to someone who's 65 and is RVing. How am I going to do that? Well, don't do it through social media. Actually, go to an RV park near your house, and I can guarantee you there's some around there. Walk around. Park the car, go walk around, and just start talking. And believe me, RVers are very friendly. And tell them what you're doing. And they'll say, and they'll, you know, um, and, and try to get the truth out of them. Say, I don't want the sales pitch. What's real life at 55? in an RV, 65 in an RV, or maybe you're in 70s or 80s. How are you feeling now about RVing? Or maybe you're 20 to 30 and you're young millennials. Uh, what's really going on? What's your disadvantages? What are the good things? What are the bad things? 
What about expenses? What are the things that you didn't expect that you, you know, that you're, when you got on the road? You got to ask those questions and you just don't want to do it through Facebook. Because, I mean, some people are very passionate about this RVing stuff. And I was too. But the older I get, the more the check engine light comes on. <laughs> and the more I'm going, well, you know, I need to look at all these other opinions. And they outnumber me uh, saying, hey, go 100% RVing. There's a lot of really good discussions going on. But the best people to talk to are the real people. And you'll find out real quick, it's not what you think out here. Every RVer has a different story. And it, it and it's not the stereotype. In fact, I I don't know if there is a stereotype anymore because just you know, and and there's people running full blown businesses out of the rig. Some people they have to use an RV just to have their business because they move a lot or do business in other states and they actually follow the work. So wow. Anyway, it's a lot. But <laughs> do you want a home? Do you want a place to live? Do you want to keep the American dream? He's like, oh, Rob, not that American dream thing. What is wrong with that American dream? Yeah, it's been <laughs> tainted a little bit. But it doesn't mean we can't go back to it. And uh, so I'm, you know, so many people have said, well, you living in the past and stuff. And yeah, uh, there's a lot of things in the, and a lot of things in the past weren't necessarily good, by the way. But there were some things that, you know, there, uh, Americana felt a little stronger. We respected both sides of the fence, whether we liked it or not. We never, you know, you just never protested whatever president we got, for God's sakes. It's, you know, I've got several presidents that came along that I didn't, <laughs> I didn't vote for. But once they're in, you go, okay, show me what you got. And so if... You know, it really comes down, if you want to talk about that subject a little bit, if you have a complaint or don't like something, organize a committee, put a group together, talk to your, uh, you know, do something, take action, real action, not something like block a road or something. I mean, take real community action. If you don't like something, change it. Get out there. Run for election. Run for your community. Become a mayor. Get on a city council. Just don't sit back and bellyache. <laughs> if you do, then I can say is go do something about it. And that's the same thing with this RVing stuff. Go out. Do your homework. Talk to real people. Get the real story. Have honest communication with your partner if there's a partner involved. Of Do you want to give up a house? And by the way... I have ran into several people who, especially I go out the hot tub with some guys out there relaxing. You say, hey, where are you from? And he says, oh, yeah, I've been traveling. It's like, and my wife is still at the house. It's like, what? <laughs> and she goes, well, she likes, she's not really into the RVing, and I am. Oh, okay. So I'll travel all this, and then uh, at certain locations, she flies down and meets him for a while. And then... <laughs> And then she's had enough. She flies home. Say, have fun, dear. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay. Now, with me, it's like, I don't know how to function without Sherry. So that wouldn't work for me and Sherry. But it, it seems to work for quite a few couples where the, the husband wants to travel and the other one says, I still like my house and I like my yard and I like my garden. So, yeah, you go ahead, dear. Have yourself a blast. When you get to like Palm Springs, give me a call and I'll fly down for two weeks. <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> and if it works for them and they're happy and they all are pleased, then that's a good thing. The other thing I want to bring up with a house as opposed to an RV is it's kind of like talking about courtside. And oh, courtside is a great place. But the bottom line is courtside is a desert. <laughs> It's got no rivers, no lakes. <laughs> it's got no water. It's a desert. Plain old, 100% desert. Now, yeah, it's the people that make it nice and all that stuff. And I agree with that. But the bottom line, it's a desert. And it's not for everybody. And who? not everybody wants a boondock. 
Well, the same thing with a house as opposed to an RV. Um, when you're in an RV, you own your RV, okay? But as soon as you step out the door, there's not a thing out there that's yours. It's everybody else's. So it's not your property. And some people bring plants and little decorations and they're constantly getting in trouble for it, trying to make it their own. But it's rented property. It's, it's like having a mobile home and you don't actually own the property. Um, it's... Uh, you know, the, the restrooms and the shower house, the pool, and all that stuff, it's not yours. Now, the pros and cons are as, well, then I don't have to maintain and pay for it. I just contribute through my, you know, the, the rates. And uh, that's very true. And, you know, like some RVs have washers and dryers, some don't. And uh, those aren't necessarily the, Sherry and I, uh, we don't like the little washer and dryers if your clothes come out so wrinkly. But, we only had the all in one, so I hear that the two separate units are a little better than the all in one. So I'll, I'll be open minded to that. So, but the bottom line is, nothing is yours. Nothing, it's theirs. Um, and so I, I get to see everything and go all these places and stuff. And the bottom line is, it's still not yours. <laughs> it's everybody's. Um, if you go to BLM land and stuff, it's still not yours. You have to respect it as being owned by the government or owned by someone that's letting you use it. So, uh, or even state parks or national parks, it's not yours. And you have to follow their rules. Not your rules. You can't make up your own rules. You have to follow. And, of course, the more people that abuse it, the more the rules get tighter and tighter. And... Uh, um, your pets, the other things, you know, at a home, you have property. You can let your dog or cat do anything they want in that property or give them a place to run and stuff. What I keep finding, especially like what really bothered me was up at the Redwoods, is every trail, every place I went said no dogs. And it's like, what? <laughs> Why can't I take a dog? And it's like a lot of places I can always take a dog, but... I was really, I mean, everywhere we went with the uh, redwood trees and stuff, and if, and if people have been there, you probably realized it too. You can't take your dog anywhere with you. It's frustrating. So, uh, uh, in fact, we couldn't even enjoy the redwoods as much as us because we'd go for a drive and get ready to go for a little hike into the uh, woods a little bit to go enjoy the big trees, and realize we got to leave the dog in the car. And of course. Uh, that's a little worrisome, and so it didn't it always hurt the trip or kind of spoil it for us. And uh, so, same thing in an RV park, you don't own the property. One hundred thousand dogs have uh, used the little doggy park. Lord, you know, to me, Lord knows what diseases. And it's a good thing I keep Cinder's shots up, and uh, um, where you know, at your own home, you wouldn't have those issues. So you really need to think about that. But um, uh, when you talk about the numbers, I, I can't really say the numbers because the problem is, is one person may have lived in the same house all their lives and it could be paid off. Another person has uh, had jobs and, and contracts all over the United States and had to jump from house to house to house and had to deal with the economies at the time. So probably do, don't, do not own their home. And so, uh, uh, and then there's people who was hurt so bad through the recession and uh, very sad. But imagine being like a middle-aged uh, executive and you suddenly got laid off and you say, well, okay, well, I'm 40 or 50 years old. What am I going to do with my life? I don't know how many people got put in that situation in 2008. It was terrible. And so a lot of people had to rebuild their lives including me and Sherry. That's kind of our story. And so um, uh, we didn't, uh, in fact, to rebuild our lives, we actually didn't buy anything. We rented an apartment for five years, went back to an aerospace company that was I was at for several years before. Luckily got my pension years back. And so I added five more years to it. And at 55, I was able to retire with a 
not a large pension, but a, a reasonable pension. Uh, not enough to live on. Um, I could probably by myself, and once I got Social Security, be all right. But uh, uh, it's not a bundle of dough. So uh, um, fortunate in that way, and I we kept our costs down as low as we could during those years to rebuild our lives, and we have. And uh, did, uh, um, and so you know, there's Sherry and I have got you know keep looking off the left of our eye, saying, "Well, I wouldn't mind living here. Should we buy a house here, or?" Um, or do we want to stay in an RV all of our lives? And the answer to that probably for me and Sherry is, no, I don't want to live full time in an RV all my life. Uh, how long? I don't know. Will I always be RVing? Yes, for goodness sake. Oh, don't get me wrong. We love RVing and what it can do and all the places you can go. I'm just not sure that I just want to live my entire life in a small space. And, uh, there's an, and don't get me wrong, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So that's what I kind of wanted to bring up is on this, should you should get rid of your home or should you buy a home? Um, it really comes down to what's your situation. I'm just kind of recapping everything. And, uh, of course, your finances. And uh, what? Do you think the future is going to look like and where are you in that situation? Are you young, middle-aged, or just hitting the real senior ages of 60, 65 area? Uh, your decisions are going to be so much different. And then the bottom line is, what will it look like at the end? There will be an end. There will be a time that you'll have to come off the road. In fact, that just happened recently to the Higgins on, from uh, uh, Living the RV Dream. Uh, made more sense because of health reasons to buy a house. And uh, I, I, by the way, have full respect for those folks. They've done a great job and they've done podcasting forever. And uh, uh, that's why we try to keep our show more of a RV lifestyle. Uh, and that's why we talk about these different lifestyles of people. Because uh, I, you know, I just have so much respect for their channel. So anyway, um, that's all I have to say about that right now. I would love to hear your feedback and comments. If you got something nasty to say, just do it professionally. And uh, we do appreciate a negative or opposing opinions. There's nothing wrong with that. And it gives us something to talk about next show. Just be professional. That's all I ask. Is is uh, And if you don't want to be professional out in the open, you can you know send us direct mail um, otherwise. So... Anyway, uh, let's move on. And, of course, we've got to take the time to uh, recognize our sponsor. It's actually a new division of our company, of goodmusicradio.com, which is an internet radio station that was created a few months ago. Uh, it's growing pretty well. We're pretty happy with it. Uh, by the way, if you're a business uh, or a service uh, that would like to do some... Uh, um, audio uh, commercials on it. Uh, this is a good time to do it because we're, you know, there's bargains to be had, and so just contact us. Uh, I'm going to let you know how to contact us in a minute, and you can do it through uh, RV Talk Radio. Anyway, uh, it's called uh, GoodMusicRadio.com. It's an internet radio station. runs 24/7. It has very little talk, very little commercials, but it does have commercials. <laughs> and if you want to be one or put one on there, let us know. And uh, it's, uh, if you actually go to goodmusicradio.com, you can actually download a free app. And by the way, all of this is free. And uh, uh, the app will uh, go right on your cell phone, and you can play our music anywhere you go. You, just, you can put headphones on, take us jogging, take us fishing, take us hiking, what, uh, take us on your RV, take us while you're driving and traveling. Uh, it's great. As long as you can get internet, you can get uh, good music radio. So uh, it's coming along really good. We're really happy with it. There's hundreds and hundreds of greatest hits, past and present. And yet, all genders are in there. There's uh, country, there's easy listening, there's pop, there's classic uh, rock. It's uh, great stuff. And it's songs you know or songs that you go, wow, I haven't heard that in a while. 
So I promise you, you uh, you'll love the channel, and it's very rare that there'll be a song on there you won't like. So check it out, goodmusicradio.com. The other thing I wanted to remind you of is contact us anytime. You can uh, contact me directly by email at rob at rvtalkradio.com. Or you can go right to the website, go to the contact page, and then this is all private. You can shoot us a note that way. Or go to our Facebook page for RV Talk Radio or RV Travel Buddy. Go up to the top and message and let us know. If you're listening to the our, uh, video version of the show, you can also leave comments below. And on our channel, there's a way to go to a private email part. Um, I'm not sure what button to push on that but yeah you can contact us that way too so yeah we'd love to hear from you um good bad or indifferent and we just ask you to be professional um but uh love to hear from you um <laughs> and i got a great story to tell you in a minute here i swear that every time i decide to uh, record a show here and i try my best to put buffers on everything but uh, motorcycles go by, cell phones are ring, email chimes go off, dog decides to bark. <laughs> it's all the above. <laughs> so I am sorry if that bothers anybody, but it's real life. So anyway, the, the thing I want to tell you about is like, um, like I tell you guys, we love to hear from you. And just uh, yesterday or the day before, uh, one of our listeners contacted us and says, Hey, I hear you're uh, in Arizona at an RV park that he heard us say. And uh, uh, he's on his way over to Courtside because there's a bunch of people going to Courtside. And uh, by the way, that's a desert. <laughs> it's no water. <laughs> no. Well, there there is a river not too far away, but... It's a desert. It's 100% desert. So anyway, um, but it's the community and everything that's going on there is a lot of fun. So anyway, he says, well, I'm, we're passing through for one night. Uh, love to uh, meet you. And do you like a uh, Riesling wine? And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. And so uh, he asked, well, what space are you in? And uh, I told him, well, uh, well uh, the space that he... Uh, says, uh, we're going to be in space 101. And I had to laugh. <laughs> we're in 102. So it's like, I have news for you. You're going to meet us whether you like it or not. So it was really, what a coincidence out of, what, 300 sites here or so, uh, that he'd be right next to us. So we're really looking forward to just passing through for one day. Uh, I'll tell you more about him and introduce him more properly. I'm not going to say names or anything on this show. Um, he just bought a brand new, uh, class C, uh, and is anxious to show us and we're anxious to see it. It was actually a rig that Sherry and I was interested in for a while. So what a nice thing. So if you happen to be in Arizona and especially if you're down here now, uh, during the winter, uh, but you might be in a different RV park or something and like to, uh, meet for a cup of coffee or something, or come over and check out a meat cinder, <laughs> whatever you'd like to do. Have dinner, meet for lunch, have breakfast. We're good. We're game. We we, we always love meeting people, and we love the. It's a great opportunity to um, get ideas for the show. Uh, if we get a chance, I'll try to see if I can uh, come up with something to to put on the show for the gentleman we're meeting. Uh, he does have a spouse uh, or better half. Don't know much about them yet, uh, but sh uh, she um, uh, isn't with them right now. I guess it's going to catch up with them. So, yeah, there's another one of those situations where it's a little different. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, we really hope that we have an opportunity to talk to you. Uh, in some cases, some people just like to, you know, some people contact us and ask if we could just talk. Uh, especially if there are new people getting into the RV. They know that me and Sherry are realists. And we're not going to paint this big, pretty picture of what RVing is all about. But never get us wrong. We love RVing. We just, you know, we'll probably ask you 20 questions before we'll answer your question. Like, well, how old are you? What are you driving? How, you know, how, what are you going to do for income? All those kind of things. Um, may not be questions you want to be asked, but uh, if you want an honest question from me and Sherry, 
uh, we will be, you know, we will ask those kind of questions and say, well, I've seen people and then tell you what I've seen and not just what me and Sherry do. And uh, I see couples doing all kinds of cool stuff. So you never know. By the way, I cannot believe how many people have motorcycles. Uh, what an amazing thing. Um, I, I don't know how people carry some of this stuff. And then there's some people that carry so much. They literally have an RV pulling a trailer with motorcycles in it and have their other partner follow them in a separate car. And then uh, I, you know, so they're never actually in the RV together while traveling. Uh, so, I mean, if that's just, that's a real requirement for having stuff. And of course, down here, a lot of people bring little four wheelers or what we call uh, rails uh, for, you know, a, uh, four-wheeling kind of stuff um, so because we have great trails down here and of course a lot of people like to go down the sand dunes and stuff but uh, so they'll tow um, one of those they're not quads but they're a little more than they're more like a, you know a sand buggy and a lot of them are street legal because I've seen them driving on the road and they have license plates so yeah so how they carry all this stuff is beyond me I saw one guy mount one of those things a very clever way on top of their truck far enough ahead to still pull a fifth wheel. It's like, oh my God. So that must, I don't know how he gets it up on top of that truck, but it, it, he does it. <laughs> so, wow, all kinds of toys. So anyway, we'd love to hear from you. And if you ever want to catch up with me and Sherry, we'd sure love to uh, uh, meet you, especially if you're down here in Arizona right now. Uh, this is a great time to catch up. We'll be here for quite a while. So, yeah, don't be shy. Uh, shoot us an email first, and then uh, once we got private messaging going on, then we'll reveal some phone numbers to you so we could talk to each other. So, yeah, I'd love, to, love that. So, uh, But, yeah, we're looking forward to meeting the gentleman. Uh, it'll be this week, so the next following radio show, I'll tell you more about it. And, of course, for those of you that start watching our videos or have been watching our videos, you will probably notice a little bit of a difference. <laughs> and it's called the Muppets. <laughs> or Puppets. They're really Puppets. Muppets is actually a brand of uh, uh, Henderson. So anyway, um, Jim. Jim Henderson. And uh, anyway, so w uh, you know I always talk about what we want to do with our shows. We don't want to be just like everybody else. Uh there's this, you know, there's always a new channel coming on day after day and day, and there's some that stand out more than others. And but it really gets down to most of the general ones will do the same thing over and over again. Either an RV tip, which are nice to have, or they'll talk about the weather. And it's the same like right now, everybody's talking about winter stuff. And I told you it's like, uh, you know, I could do winterization stuff. Of course, I don't have a lot of that in Arizona right now, but. Um, so we kind of stay with lifestyle. And believe me, that, that'll that never get old because every time I think I've heard of a story that works with RVing, I hear something new. Totally amazing stuff. So with our RV uh, videos and stuff, uh, you know, we do, we've done RV tips and we've done uh, uh, other things. We've actually added boating and stuff like that. We just want to be a little like different, not just the same old stuff. And we like to have you with us for a long time. And yes, one week when we may talk about boating, you may not have no interest in boating. Well, that's fine. This, the next video, you may not know what the heck we're going to talk about, whether shopping at Costco, uh, RV fix, or, or, or having some fun and, and, and doing a, a humor video which we just launched when it was and it's doing really well it was uh, uh we have a newscaster muppet that uh we created and we're green screening a little bit here in the rv and uh, it'll all get much better when we have a studio uh because it's really hard to do lighting in this uh, rv so anyway uh um so then we came up with this grandma and grandpa uh uh characters and then we got some other ones i can't tell you what they are because it's a surprise because we got videos coming out in the future or in the works for some funny stuff and so we just want you to say well, what's rob doing this week what's rob and sherry doing and uh 
yes, we tried my best to get Sherry in these, but by the t right now with the schedule the way it is, it's always dark by the time she gets home and it's hard I mean, to do outdoor shots. Uh, I can only get her on the weekends. And uh, that's just how it is. So uh, we do the best we can. Uh, we're having a lot of fun. It's not easy, by the way, to add Muppets to our show. Uh, it takes a lot more editing, coordination, plus learning the art of puppetry. Uh, is uh, you know We're spending night after night going through lessons and tutorials of learning how to do it. Yes, we're making some mistakes and we're having some issues with the sound and trying to figure out what works best. And, and, and so it's been funny. And so uh, some of you guys will go, wow, Rob's just doing Muppets and I'd like RVs and blah, 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 and, and you unsubscribe and we understand. Uh, but, you know, our viewers and clients and we're constantly growing, um, we want variety. And, and <laughs> I want you to be able to say, oh, no, he's not going to talk about Costco again or, oh, no, he's not going to talk about cooking something again in a certain his favorite thing or oh no he's not going to talk about winterizing again um it's like almost like you know what the show is going to be about before you even click on the link with our shows we want you to go okay what do you do this time <laughs> and that's that's kind of what you, you know we, we enjoy rving we enjoy the things around rving uh, the boating, fishing, outdoors, that's why we call a channel that uh, is an outdoor travel channel, is it's just, you know, so all the things that are encompassed around our being. So uh, anyway, <laughs> so we added in the Muppets, and it'll get, you know, better as we go. The production will get better. We're trying to learn how to do this stuff. And uh, uh, we're trying to make the scripts short and sweet. So, hey, in the morning, if you're at work and he's like, what's Robin Sherry doing today? Oh, my gosh, they got a Muppet show. And it's only going to be, you know, a few minutes long. Uh, I hope you get a smile. And if we made you smile and made you kind of envious of being our viewers and coming out here and we like to have you or you get to enjoy our lifestyle through our videos while you're stuck in doing the nine to five and trust me i was there for years watching other people having a blast and i couldn't wait to retire so i could get out here and do this so thank goodness for those great videos out there that uh there's folks to uh get a chuckle from and and see what they're doing and it was really funny when you know um when they had some humor to it so that's what we're all about I hope that you guys always know it means Sherry uh, have good hearts. We mean well. We want everybody to be as happy as possible. We want to be realistic. We want to be real. And, uh, of course, you know, <laughs> Muppets don't make it real. But we want it to be fun. And we want to put a twist on things. So how many RV channels are using Muppets? And I don't think I know of any right now. I saw some being kind of... Well, puppets being used in a bad way but these are going to be as professional as possible and we'll be get better at it as if we set up our studios get our green screen right get our sounds uh, more tweaked in so uh, hopefully we'll advance and get better and better at it so anyway i hope you enjoy those we'd love to hear your feedback about adding the new uh, puppets and i'm calling them muppets because most people can relate to muppets uh, they're full-size characters and uh uh, each one's a challenge to run, uh, trying to figure out the voices we want to use for them and uh, coordinating uh, uh, the editing. Because it's kind of funny, you actually have to, and, and those of you who do these uh, sh uh, videos, we actually have to shoot all the shots and all the uh, uh, quotes from the, we write the scripts ahead of time and then film the whole thing in one shot uh, with the Muppet on a green screen so then we put it on a software add the background we want um, to the green screen and actually render that so puppet number one may be rendered completely after we're done so that's a full editing for that one then puppet number two may uh, have the same thing and then the actual show if we're doing something else we'll actually edit that so it's actually three edits or four edits depending on how many characters we're using and then we have to merge the whole thing into a full version. So, yeah, it turns out to be a lot more work. And uh, 
but boy, some of them come out, you're just cracking up, just making up these videos. And so it's been a lot of fun. We'll, st you know, we'll still have videos without Muppets, but uh, uh, and we will have some new characters. And we'll actually, if it turns out to be successful, we actually have our eyes out of having some custom Muppets built for uh, the show. So we'll see how that goes. But I hope you enjoy it. Love to hear your feedback. Uh, if you got some funny scripts that you'd like to submit to us, uh, like I said, we just did one on the Arizona weather. Uh, we got some other ones coming up. I can't reveal what they are. This is a spoiler fun. And you, uh, video just came out last week. Uh, we did talking about our 2017 plans and, uh, grandma and grandpa, which are Muppets, uh, were introduced a little more on that. So this week <laughs> there's a video coming out that's completely Muppet and, uh, <laughs> I, I hope you get a kick out of it. It kind of, if you're over 50, you're going to love it. <laughs> so anyway, um, I think it's called grandma go for a walk in the, uh, grandma, a walk RV walk in the RV park walk with grandma or something like that is what it's called. And, uh, so it's a very short film and <laughs> it's pretty funny. So anyway, um, that's what's going on with, uh, with the channels. Well, guys, we're getting towards the end of the show. I just wanted to take the time to really thank you for listening. Uh, turns out, I mean, the more time goes on, the more I, I find out we have some real loyal listeners, and I, I really do appreciate that. I know I'm not the best DJ. <laughs> I know I'm not the best speaker. I wish I was, but I'm not. But I really hope that Sherry and I are, uh, are people that you feel uh, that are real and that we are uh, uh, encouraging you and, and maybe even just giving you a good show to make you feel good. And I hope you get some good chuckles. Um, you got to have humor in life. You just can't be a Debbie Downer all the time. And so I'm hoping that we pull people out of their uh, funk, you might say. And uh, that's always going to be our goal. And if it isn't with RVing, it would be something else, whether it's fishing, hunting, whatever else we do. I just want you to be happy. And I hope that Sherry and I, you know, we try to go through life with a positive attitude, even when bad things happen. You just, when you get in a funky mood or something goes amuck, the best thing you do is talk to other people actually take the time to ask them how they're doing and you might feel yourself being pulled out of it a little bit and hear what other people are doing that are uh, uh, you don't have to do what they're doing but they can give you ideas of how to get out of your funk you might say and if we can make your life a little bit nicer then, then we've been successful and if it's only one person we've done that with we've still been successful so thank you so much for being a listener and please make sure that you take the time to shoot us a note, subscribe to our uh, video channel. We appreciate it, uh, Outdoor Travel Channel. And uh, love to have you like us on our Facebook and uh, say hello. Just say hello. We really don't mind. You're not imposing on us at all. If we're going to be out here in front of you, you certainly shouldn't feel shy to say hello. We just don't mind it at all. So anyway... I'm Rep Scribner from RV Talk Radio. Thank you so much, and we'll talk to you next week, every Monday. And we'll be episode 79, I believe, by then. So, yeah. Anyway, we'll talk to you later. Bye now.